Hello and welcome to this second part of the podcast on pedigrees, twin studies, and adoption studies. In the last podcast, we talked about pedigrees and what kind of information we were able to get from pedigrees. In this podcast, we're going to look at two other methods that are used to learn more about human heredity. These are twin studies and adoption studies. Let's go ahead and get started with twin studies. Okay, now let's move away from pedigrees and look at a twin and adoption studies. And let's answer some questions here. How much of the, of the genes or the environment are shared within these individuals? So a dizygotic twin, popularly we would call these fraternal twins or non-identical twins, but dizygotic just means there are two zygotes two eggs have been fertilized. So with dizygotic twins, they have a shared environment. And 50% of genes are shared. This is the same as if we were to say siblings. Siblings and dizygotic twins are the same in this sense. If they were siblings, they would also share an environment and share 50% of their genes. A monozygotic twin, or what we often refer to as identical twins in popular uh, culture, um, but mono means one zygote. One egg was fertilized, but you have two individuals. They have they share 100% of their genome, with some exceptions to that, but we'll live with that for now. And they have a shared environment. And then sometimes they do these studies, ethically um, challenged these studies are, and so they don't do them anymore, but they have done them. Twins raised apart from each other. And I should say, this is monozygotic twins raised apart from each other. These individuals should have a 100% genome sharing. They have the same genome, but not a shared environment. Our last category here are adopted individuals. So we need to break this up into two categories. With the birth parents, the adopted individual shares genes roughly 50%, but not the environment. And in relation to the adopted parents, they share no genes with the adopted parents, but they share environment. I'm out of room here, so make sure you write that down. To the adoptive parents, they don't share any genes, but they share an environment. And we're going to focus on twin studies first. So let's remind ourselves, monozygotic, which we often abbreviate MZ, monozygotic twins, share 100% of their genes. And dizygotic twins, often abbreviated DZ, share 50% of their genes. Some, in, some things we should mention, dizygotic twins increase, shown by the up arrow, increase with age, but this is not true with monozygotic twins. Dizygotic twins, we often say they run in families. 
what we really mean to say is that dizygotic twin, the trait of having a dizygotic twins is heritable. Monozygotic twins are not thought to be inheritable. We may find out later we're wrong on that, but the reason for this is that there are traits that a woman could have where she produces more than one egg a month, and that trait is going to lead to a dizygotic twin. We don't know of a trait that a woman could have that would stimulate a monozygotic twin to form. So how do we use these studies? We use them by studying something called concordance. And concordance means the percent of twins that share a trait. Meaning if one twin has it, the other twin has it. So as an example, some studies have shown that epilepsy has a 59% concordance in monozygotic twins. What that means is that if one twin has epilepsy, 59% of the time, the other twin will also have it. So how do we use these numbers? Well, we compare them with a dizygotic twin. And for instance, in dizygotic twins, the concordance is 19%. Because of this big difference between monozygotic twins and dizygotic twins, and the fact that monozygotic twins share more of their DNA with each other than dizygotic twins, we would say this is an example of a trait that is largely controlled by genetics. We wouldn't say completely controlled by genetics, but we would say largely controlled. As a general rule, if monozygotic twins have a higher percentage than dizygotic twins, we say the trait is more controlled by genetics and less by the environment. Okay, let's look at another set of concordance values. Let's look at cancer. In cancer, the concordance for monozygotic twins is 12%. And the concordance for dizygotic twins is 15%. Looking at these numbers, we can say that cancer is largely controlled by the environment. Now the reason we say this isn't because both these values are, are low, it's because they are similar to each other. For instance, heart attacks in males in males, for monozygotic twins, it's 35%. And in dizygotic twins, it's roughly 30%. Now there's a little bit of a difference there, but they're very similar. Again, we're going to say this is largely controlled by the environment as well. So it's not that they have to be low, it's that these two values have to be similar. Very rarely can you look at concordance values and say it's completely controlled by the environment or completely controlled by genetics. And let's talk about that one exception. If you had a concordance for monozygotic twins, that was 100%, and for dizygotic twins, it was 50%, then you would say it is completely genetics. That the environment plays no role at all. And the example of this would be Huntington's disease. So let's write some general rules. If 
Mono's I got it concordance, I'm just going to abbreviate that, is larger, in fact, much larger than dizygotic twin concordance. We're going to say that means it is largely genetics, less environment. Now, I'm not saying the environment doesn't have a role in this case, it's just more genetics. And on any exam situation, I will make sure that it's clear that there's a big difference. I won't go 30% and 38% and expect you to um, know if that's really large difference. We'll go 80 and 20, just so it's clear that I'm, I'm, I'm trying to show you that there's a big difference. Genetic counselors who do this for a living, they are going to use a, a much finer detail than what I'm explaining here. This is just to explain the concept. There's more to it than, than what um, is being revealed here. If monozygotic is, I'm going to say equal to dizygotic, but I'm going to say roughly equal, okay? They don't have to be the exact same, but if they're about the same, then we're going to say it's largely environmental, less genetics. Again, I'm not saying no genetics, I'm just saying less genetics. And if monozygotic is equal to 100%, the concordance that is, and dizygotic is, concordance is equal to 50%, then we say it's completely genetic. On exams, I always have a table of some sort or multiple choice question asking you to compare concordance values. So make sure you understand this. We won't have time to talk about it here in this podcast, but um, you can do some research on your own if you'd like. That they have done studies where they've taken twins, identical twins, monozygotic twins that is, and have separated them at birth and then periodically had them come in for tests. And they were able to determine some interesting things about um, certain traits that are seem to have more of a genetic control on them than we would have uh, initially thought. However, um, one might argue, and I might agree, that doing such studies, um, there are some ethical decisions one would have to make before they would allow twins to be separated at birth. And that's why they don't do them anymore. The last thing I want to talk about, talk about adoption, and that's because when you have the case of an adoption, you have the birth parents, and the adopted person and the adopted adoptive parents. The adopted person shares their genetic background with the birth parents. They share their environment with the adoptive parents. So by looking at traits that an adoptive person has and whether or not their birth parents or adoptive parents had that trait tells us a lot about whether that trait is influenced by genes or the environment. So for instance, if you had a case where a biological parent, and I'm just going to put BP just to save space and time here, let's say, and when they did a study with a bunch of people here, and on average they died before the age of 50. due to some kind of infection. They discovered that the adopted person here was also likely to die by 50. This was kind of surprising because I think when people, before they did the study, they would have thought that this was much more of an environmental issue. But it turns out that the person's genetic background says a lot about whether or not they will be prone to certain kinds of infection. The reverse is seen if the adoptive parents, so we'll write that one down real quick. If, if the adoptive parent died by age 50, the adopted individual also
also more likely to die by 50, age 50. And again, this suggests, because they don't share a genes, they share an environment, that this, this is caused by an environmental effect. Oh, I forgot one, one kind of important word here. Adoptive parent died by 50 due to a cardiovascular disease. Okay. Now that might make a little bit more sense. Because the shared environment, maybe they're eating less healthily, maybe they're exercising less, and those kind of traits can be passed on to a child, regardless of their genetic background. So these adoption studies can um, tell us a lot about certain traits. All right, let's have a quick summary here. We went through a lot of stuff um, in this podcast. Um, we talked about the difference between a polygenic trait and a multifactorial trait. You should know those definitions. We, we also talked about how traits are influenced by both the environment plus genetics, which essentially is the multifactorial trait. We then talked about pedigrees, and when you look at a pedigree, you need to be able to tell me the mode of inheritance, identify genotypes, and give me some examples of those traits. And we ended with talking about how we use twin and adoption studies to understand traits and important in particular to understand the effects of the environment versus the role of genetics. All right, that's all I have for this podcast. If you have any questions at all, please make sure you come see me. If not, I'll see you in class. Bye.